Hi, I'm Christopher Marland, Snowflake Solutions Architect here at Aimpoint Digital and also a Snowflake Data Superhero. In this seventh video in our Cortex LLM series, we're going to be looking at fine tuning. With fine tuning, you can actually customize the LLMs you have access to in Snowflake. You can refine them and teach them how to do things like, say, understand your domain specific uh, terminology and any very idiosyncratic uh, logic or, or business definitions that exist within your company. That's a great way to actually, uh, you know, maximize the amount of value you can get from Cortex. So if that sounds good, and I'm sure it does, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be looking at some accounts payable data. Uh, so say we've got some invoices and some line items and that sort of thing. Um, if you look at the description below, you should see some links to these account payable uh, .parquet files. Uh, we're going to use ActPay um, to do our kind of, you know, training validation, that sort of thing. Um, and our ActPay new is the thing we're going to analyze. So, um, you know, just uh, press the, the plus button and then drag into here um, and you should be able to quickly and easily upload these uh, ActPay parquet files. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to create uh, the table with the... Um, our accounts payable here um and then what i'll do is i'll just have a little look at this so we can see what we're playing with okay so here we have invoice number date amount the vendor name and we have various line items within that we have an account code an account name the amount and the item so what we want to do is we want to be able to throw some invoice data and have it kind of work out from the item and the vendor what the account code should be and you know, then the, the, the account name. Okay, so I'm just going to test it. Um, and I've got some pre-written SQL here that I'll just quickly explain what's going on. This is transformation stuff, so I don't think any need for uh, us to go too deep here. Um, but basically, you know, as so we turn the invoice into a number, extract the line items, um, and we're flattening here, uh, we're parsing as JSON the line items, and we're flattening those line items so that there's a row per line item. Then what we're doing is we're concatenating a few things in order to create a, a prompt here. Um, and this doesn't need to be wrapped in a concat. I've literally just done this for, for the sake of readability here. Um, so you are an agent that helps categorize invoices for our bookkeeping team. They need to categorize each line item and uh, I actually misspelled categorize. Uh, each line item per account code and account name, uh, the following account codes and their account names. Um, so this then, you know, queries, you know, you know, array aggregates, that's, you know, bundling everything together uh, per row. Then it's array distinct, which means, you know, any, any repeats we're getting rid of. And then array to string, turning that into um, a nice string that we can use. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, we'll see what this does, but, you know, this is basically just listing all the account codes and the account names and what, what they could look like. Um, then try doing, uh, try doing it for this invoice line item, the line item is, da, 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 and the vendor is, da, da, da. that's then our prompt. Um, and then we have account code as completion, and I'll, I'll explain what that means in, in a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to just test. So we're going to use the snowflake.cortex.complete function from um, another video. Uh, we're going to use Mistral 7B as our model and enter the prompt here. And I'm going to call this uh, LLM response. Okay, 
So now just below this, what I'm doing is, you know, uh, it's very hard to get many LMs to give you just, just one answer, unfortunately. Um, so what this is doing is it's just saying, you know, when we see a four digit account, for, for four digits, assume that's account code and extract that. And then just as a verification step, we're saying, you know, if the completion, which is, you know, the account code we know to be correct, um, and the LLM account code are the same thing, you know, true, otherwise false. So let's run this um, and hopefully it shouldn't be too long, but if it is, we, we can always pause the video. Um, we're at 10 seconds at the moment. So yeah, I think I'm gonna pause this and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, great. So we do have a result now. Um, and we can see that, you know, it's not done an awful job, but there's definitely room for improvement here. Um, so we're going to go create a fine tuning model and hopefully that's going to make things a lot better. So what we need um, is training data. Um, so this is, you know, a kind of set that it can use to, to read and say, okay, right, well, um, this, this, this is what things look like. So, so let's use that. Um, validation data is actually optional, but definitely makes, makes things stronger. Um, and that's basically, you know, what it can use to test to say, actually, am I getting this right or, or wrong? Um, both of these need to have a prompt and a completion columns. So the prompt is essentially, you know, the thing that you're, you're, you're giving to the model, you know, prompts, um, everyone understands that in this, uh, chat GPT world of ours. Um, the completion is the expected response of the model. Okay. And, you know, this allows us to create a fine tuning job that we can call in the complete function. So a few components there, we're going to create training data set, a validation data set, um, and then a fine tuning job, a fine tuning, a fine tuning model. Okay. Grand. So I'm going to do my training validation here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy and paste the code that uh, we have here um, and just delete basically all of this. Um, and just to kind of make things fair, what I'll do, well, not fair, but just to split things up, what I'll do is um, say all the odd and evens are distributed uh, to different tables. So I'll just do where um, invoice number percentage two equals zero. Can't remember actually if that's the odd or the even. So, um, you know, I think this one is the odd, but I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to be quoted on that. Okay. Um, if I'm wrong, please don't judge me. Um, then for the validation, in fact, let me just run that. Um, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the validation. Um, I think this is a little bit of an error with um, the notebook. So I'm just going to delete this cell and create a new one. Um, yeah, okay, great. Uh, and then I'll run this. In fact, I'll, well, we're having the same error, so I'll delete. Um, and actually, probably for the best, because I did need to change that one little bit. Okay, so now we've got our training and validation uh, data sets, and, and they're two different slices of the data. So then what we need to do is we need to create a fine tuning model. Um, and so the way we do that is we select as with most things in Cortex, we're going to the Snowflake database, the Cortex schema. So snowflake.cortex.finetune. There we are. Um, first, we're going to say that we want to create the model. Um, that, that makes sense. We're going to give it a name, and I'm going to call it ActPay Account Codes. Um, from there, we need to put the base model, which is that Mistral 7B. 
And then what we need to do is we just need to specify the um, the select statements from the training and validation data. So that's just you know select prompt, um, and then oh yeah, it's completion from. Pay training nice and easy, and then I'll just copy and paste that because I'm only changing the one thing. Uh, ACPay validation. Okay, I think we've got that there. And this again might take, uh, oh, it's not taking a lot of time, but we keep having this issue. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, never mind, it's a quick fix. I may just proactively delete these uh, cells. Uh, grand, okay, so we've got our model created. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just quickly check everything's okay with it, and I'll just describe it, so I'll do... Uh, Again, select snowflake.cortex.fine tune, and then describe, and I'll use this value in here. Um, and hopefully that gives us nice bits of information. Yep, okay, that all, that all seems right to me. That's all good. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, um, I'll delete this again because we've had those those issues, um, but I'm just going to add the ACPE new now to the ACPE table. Um, and again, let's just have a little check of what that data looks like. So select star from ACPE. And we'll see what the results look like just to see the difference i'll scroll down uh, to the bottom you can see we only have the amount and the item now we don't have the account code so what we're going to ask is that the fine-tuned model helps us to get that okay so here is our query um and i shall you know delete and recreate just because of this odd cell issue we're having. Um, but you know, this is the query we, we know and love. Um, you know, just a little bit of uh, joining at the end. And it's you know, where the account code is null because we want to process the data that, um, you know, has not already been processed, basically, which I'm sure makes sense. So we're just going to call the function, uh, the complete function. And what I'll do is just do snowflake.cortex.complete. And then we you know, need to name the model and the prompt. Um, what I'm going to do is, so you know, this is a sandbox account. So I have my own database, my own warehouse, my own role. Um, that's not how things will work in your account um, if you're doing things correctly, but this is sandbox for things like demos so i have my own database um and it's in the demo schema and acpay account codes um so instead of saying something like mistral 7b i'm actually naming the fine tune model here um which i think is you know quite cool makes me feel a little powerful um and then i am going to uh do the prompt as well. So let's call that LLM response. Um, this prompt hasn't changed at all. Um, and let's run this and see how we do. Okay, great. So let's have a look. Um, so gadget solutions, um, IoT materials, these all sound correct. I've got quite a few of those. Um, financial advisories, uh, uh, I, uh, IT consultants, ah, yes, so, okay. 
Um, I don't know why the vendor's called financial advisory, but apparently they do IT consulting. It said, you know, that those are IT services that um, sounds correct to me. Internet, telecommunications. Yeah, I think that's probably reasonable. Um, inspection services, quality control, aluminium is raw material. Um, yes, I think we are, um, I think we're in business here. I think this looks quite good. So there you are. That is how you fine tune a Cortex, uh, well, a model through Cortex fine tuning. Thank you for watching this video in our Cortex series. Um, if you liked it, please do like and subscribe. And I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much.